Okay, if you're looking at this picture right now, what you're looking at is a quarter panel of a 69 Carmen Ghia. And the situation we have, it's getting closer and closer to getting done. That's the fucking objective here, see? Get her done. If you can't get her done, don't fuck with it. Just like the hand. If you don't like the hand, don't fuck with it. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. What we got is a 69 core panel. Now you've seen where I, re I repaired the rust right in this area here. We went ahead and uh, welded up the two holes, okay? And uh, this has got major body work that was already present before the owner had uh, soda blasted the car. And what I've done is I went ahead and refilled that in. I grinded all that out, I refilled that in with fresh, brand new Bondo, okay? A lot of people think they can use the old Bondo. Don't use the old Bondo. So what we got is uh, we went ahead and put our first coat of filler on here, and I feel there's a high spot. What you want to do, take your hand and rub it, just like that, and you'll be able to feel it. Now, it feels a little better here, but there's also a low spot up here. See, that's what discourages a lot of people out there. That's what people don't understand. When you're feeling it like this, and it feels like it's high here, okay, because you can feel a ridge, it's not. It's actually low right there, and we didn't go far enough up to cover it. But, to be on the safe side, because if it's flat here, and then all of a sudden it's low there, okay, you see what I'm saying? Now, uh, I did have a ridge right in this area. I took my body hammer and I tapped that. And what happens is when you have a ridge, just like I said, okay, where it feels like there's a, a valley in between the metal and the bondo, you take your body hammer and what you want to do is tap it just like so. And then rub your hand across it again. Because what you're doing is you're fighting the dent. You're going to fight it until the fighting has not fucking stopped. And you're screwing yourself in the ass every time you do. Do you want to screw yourself in the ass? Does it really feel that fucking good? Does it feel good to put the pole in the hole? Okay? Okay? Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? All right? What you want to do is when you're rubbing your hand across there and you know that it feels good down here on your first coat, but you feel a ridge here, take your hammer. And lightly tap it. Do not hit it like a fucking two by four with a hammer and a nail because you're going to ruin it then. Take your hammer. If you notice, I'm grabbing it at the very end of the hammer. I'm just letting the weight of the hammer. Okay. What that's doing is that's pushing it in here and popping it out here, see? And it's going to level it out. Now I run my hand across it, and now I can tell that there's a high spot there. If you want to do good body work, okay, hand jobs aren't going to cut it. The hand job is out the fucking door when it comes to roughing in your body work. You have to own an air compressor and an air file, just like that. Whether it's a Viking, which I prefer because it cuts it very, very quick, or it's a Hutchins, okay? I don't give a shit what it is. You have to own an air file. Look at this air file as an iron, okay? Pretend that you're ironing the metal out, okay? So I got a high spot in this area. I'm going to take my air file, and to do a quicker job, I'm going to go ahead and put a brand new piece of file paper. This is 36 grit, okay? I always start out with 36 grit. 36 grit is the way to go. On the last coat, we go to 80 grit. Okay, so I noticed there was a little bit of a high spot in this area right in here. I'm going to go ahead and air file that. And I'm also
also going to bring my air file up above the Bondo, okay, and I'm going to get a little bit more in this area. Now I'm going to take my hand again, I'm going to rub it, and I notice that the high spot is gone. This is starting to feather out more here, and everything is good. Please answer that, Swampy. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing in this area. And I'm going to go ahead and air file it until I see these edges right here start to feather out. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a feathered edge all the way around. Also, as I'm coming around my dent, because anybody that owns a Carmen Ghia, all right, nine out of nine and a half point, nine, nine point percent, ten, you're going to have dents in this area, okay? It's a given. All right, this is the rear quarter panel, and this is where a lot of the dents. Okay, there's a high spot right here as I'm rubbing my hand. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that out. And I see that I got bare metal in that area. That means that that was a high spot. See, now we're starting to see our dent. Now we're starting to see the dent come to life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this is our first coat. This is just a filler coat. Okay, this is not a finished coat. Okay, I'm going to rub it across here. I noticed that right in here has been buckled up probably from this dent here and this dent here. It buckled in this area. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... notice I have not added any more Bondo. I have not added to what I've already got due to the fact that I don't have to, okay? Because this is where our dent is. I have just filled it in. See, now I will come back and skim a lighter coat on there because now I've actually filled it in very thick with my first coat of Bondo. It's very important, once again, to always use an, a good air file and use it all the time. The reason for that is, is you've got to get used to your air tools. You got to make your air tools part of you. If you can't do that and figure it out, then you need to go fucking 7-Eleven and work. Okay? Is there a problem with that, Swampy? What I'm trying to tell you here, don't fucking give up in life, okay, just because, okay, you want to be a whiner. Okay, don't give up in life because you can't figure it out the first fucking time. Okay? Uh, I've actually done stuff a hundred fucking times. Twenty times. A million fucking times till I got it right. You think I fucking became a professional by uh, giving up? No. Do you think that, Swampy? Say it louder. No. Exactly. If you look right here in this area right here, you're going to see some uh, bare metal. Now, what that bare metal is, okay, that means that we have actually sanded our Bondo down to metal. Okay, that could actually mean that that's a high spot or that's where we stop. Okay, when you see bare metal in the surrounding area of your Bondo, stop. Okay, rub your hand across it. That feels very, very smooth. Okay, you're going to feel the difference between the texture of the Bondo and the metal. Okay, I'm, to ensure that I'm doing the proper job, I'm going to take my hammer. And if you notice when I'm hitting it, I'm actually pulling it. Okay, see there? Even that light of a hit is going to do you a square and not stick it in you like a round, okay? So now I am ready to go ahead and rebondle this. No, it does not feel perfect. It doesn't feel perfect. But now what I've done is I have formed, okay, I have formed myself a contour of what I need to do. Also, as you're air filing, you're going to see little spots that are darker in the metal. And what that is, that means that that's a low spot, okay? So that means that we're going to have to put some Bondo there. I went ahead and I filled this area in here, which you can't see, thank you very fucking much. There, now you can see it. Okay, so all this has been filled in. Now what I'll do is I'll fill this whole area with Bondo one more time. Okay, if you notice, I ground it out way up here. I already know that I'm going to put Bondo up there. Let me explain something. If the dent is this big, you're going to fill a spot that big, okay? If your dent, okay is a half inch diameter, you're going to fill in a four inch diameter. 
these two holes right here, there was a small hole here and there was another hole here that I welded up. Okay? And you see the space that I had to fill in. So we only had two little holes right in this area, but I, to feather it out properly, I had to bring it out to here. Now, when I welded this, I went ahead and hammer welded it. That means after you weld it, before it cools down, you take your hammer and you tap it so I wouldn't get no warpage in it. So that's why there's not a lot of bond here. Plus, it's a curve. Okay, curves don't warp as much. So what, this quarter panel is ready to go back over and put more Bondo on it. We will come back and I will show you the situation we have later. But right now what you need to work on is your air file techniques. Okay? 36 grit and 80 grit and 180 grit air file techniques. If you can't get that down, keep trying. Don't fucking give up. There's also called a mini air file okay, for tight to reach places. Thank you very much. This is my friend Pete, your friend Pete, everybody's friend Pete, looking out for you. Oh, I'm not looking out for you, Swampy? I'm not looking out for you. My friend Pete isn't looking out for Swampy. No, not that. I'm saying that. Hold on a second. You're telling me that my friend Pete isn't oh, looking out for Swampy. That. That's what you just said. Everybody but you. Explain yourself, Swampy. Oh, yeah. Of what you just said. You said I'm not looking out for you. Wait, wait. You said my 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 friend. Why you said you're from Pete? But you didn't say my. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my friend Trevor over here. Is that what you wanted me to say? Yeah. My friend Trevor. Yeah. I can't say my friend Trevor because I'm Pete. I'm my friend Pete. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What's your, my friend Trevor? Yeah. Then tell everybody out in uh, La La Land that you're my friend Trevor. My friend Trevor. Okay, we'll see you later, okay? See ya. Is there anything else you got to say before we go? No. Have you learned anything today? Um, yeah. What? Stay away from forklifts. Stay away from forklifts, wow. Unless you get lifted in the air and get okay. through. Okay, thank you very much, Swampy. That was a good answer. We were working on a car, but you said stay away from forklifts. You can, believe this guy, Bruno? No, because you can get lifted up and make it drop it. And where did you learn that today? I don't understand. At the junkyard. Oh, that's right. Because we went out to the junkyard to get the top for our... Doesn't that look fun? Like you, were, like, you were in the car. Yeah. And, like, you could talk and all that, and you were alive, and you were getting picked up by forklifts. That'd be kind of... Crazy. And, no. and then he drops you down like the car? Yeah. And then that would hurt? Yeah. And you'd start crying? Yeah. And probably want to call your mom and dad? Well, no, go, to first. go to the hospital emergency room first. Okay, and then call your mom and dad. Yeah. Oh, okay. Goodbye, Swampy. Take it easy. Goodbye, thank you. We'll see you later. Take it easy. Okay. Goodbye. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.